Okay. All right, everybody. We're going to get started here, finally. Yeah, a couple minutes late. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Standing away from you. Okay. Before we actually do get started with migration migraines, not presentation migraines, right? Uh, I'm going to actually ask everyone to put down all your stuff and stand up, please. Th this is the only interactive part with you guys, uh, so everyone stand up. Okay. Now, yeah, raise your hand if you guys have a birthday on an even day of the month. Two, four, six, et cetera. Okay. Everyone with your hands up, put them out in front of you like this, pretty close together, okay? Get this, yeah. Now, everybody else in the room, with the odd days of the month of her birthday, go ahead and put your arms together a little bit farther apart, still in front of you. Okay? Not, not so, like this. Not, not so much sticking straight out, but sideways, yeah? Okay. Good. Now, I need some big, big smiles, okay? Because for anybody that knows me, this is my first time to jab. This is my first international conference. And I told all my friends and family that I would get a big standing ovation for my presentation today. So thank you. Okay. Good. So now, now I have the proof. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, so again, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Justin Heron. I'm coming all the way from the northeast corner of the United States uh, to present here today. Uh, when I'm not out fighting crime at night, I work full-time at Manchester Community College. Uh, it's a higher education college I'm in my hometown. Uh, I work in the marketing department. I get to manage the school's website, do some photography stuff, uh, all kinds of good things over there. I'm also a developer for a company called Studio Zeep, which is also in town over there in New Hampshire. I'm the founding member and current manager of the local Jug over there in New Hampshire as well. I'm a big fan of Metallica music. I love to travel. Uh, and really, because of these great uh, Jay and Beyond events, uh, other Joomla Day events, now I can say that I've traveled worldwide uh, to speak at these great events. Uh, so I thank you guys for joining me here today. Yeah. All right, so migration migraines, what exactly am I going to be talking about today? Uh, well, this is not going to be a how-to guide, all right? We've all done migrations, I'm sure. Uh, well, actually, let me ask you guys. How many people in here have uh, done a migration? Whether just about everybody. Okay, good, very good. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you guys how to do a migration, right? This is just a story. And more particularly, it's my story of a 18-month-long migration that I had to go through for <laughs> a website, yes. It took a long time, hence the title of a year and a half in the life of migration migraines, right? So some site background real quick. This is a higher education website, and if you can't put two, to two together, uh, this is the website for the college that I work for, okay? So a little bit of background here. We had uh, Joomla 1.5 running very proudly uh, since about October 2010. Uh, I was hired on in the spring of that year, and the first project was to get an actual CMS for the website. Yeah, come on in, no big deal. <laughs> um, yeah, good morning. So the website was relying very heavily on CCK uh, K2. Right? We needed that power. And back in 2010, if you guys remember, uh, K2 offered things that the Joomla core did not, uh, things such as subcategories. Right? We had a lot of content to put into our website, needed better uh, structure in the, in the organization of the content, subcategories was needed. The other thing that was really needed was the extra fields and the true power of the CCK, right? We needed that for our items uh, in K2 there. Now, some of the other things that K2 offered that we did end up using, um, things like the tags, uh, the built-in comments, the social sharing, uh, all that good stuff, right? The ratings for some of the news article items. Uh, so it, it came in handy to have everything all together as one. So when it came time to doing the actual migration, we had roughly about 1,200 K2 items. You know, not that much, but still a good number. Uh, about 110 plus categories and subcategories, right? Lots of those. Uh, we had about 50 plus tags being used all across the site. 260 plus menu items. That was quite, you know, it's a good number, right? Yeah, 110 plus modules going on in there. So everything was great in Joomla 1.5 land. Right? Until, we all remember when we got that shocking news that 1.5 was coming to life, right? <laughs> I would, yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Yes, that was some shocking news when we got that day. Right, but why was that happening? Well, because finally, 1.6 was here. <laughs> Do you remember how long that took? A long, long time, right? Okay. But right. So we did some early testing, or at least I did some early testing. I'm sure all of you guys did some early testing. Uh, you know, we, we tested the waters with some of the beta releases and the stable releases came around, uh, tried things out. Some of us even got a little bit of a bad taste in our mouth with 1.6. Uh, I remember hearing some negative feedback, some, some backlash, if you will. Uh, and some people, I'm not included in this, but some people even went as far as to saying 1.6 was like our Windows Vista, right? You guys remember that? Okay. Uh, when I gave this presentation in the States, I did this at a Microsoft conference, and yeah, so they got a bit, bit of a laugh with that, but it's okay. Uh, so, but we stuck with it because greatness was ahead, right? We were always constantly being reaffirmed, stick with it, keep pushing forward with it, because um, eventually, Right, 1.7, the next release was out. We had a little bit more stable of a release, a little bit more secure of a release, right? Um, so now, it's time to get serious. It's time to get serious by developing a plan for this migration that is eventually going to happen, right? <laughs> Whether we like it or not, it's going to happen. So the first thing I was able to do, or the first thing that I chose to do, was I went and looked at all the third-party extensions that I had installed on the 1.5 site. Um, to see which ones that we can now push forward with uh, going forward because now the third-party extension developers, maybe some of you guys in this room here, uh, had actually started to get on the bandwagon, right? They were uh, starting to take notice of the 1.6, 1.7s releases uh, and updating their extensions for compatibility of future releases. So uh, I had to take a look at the ones that I had existing, uh, which ones were ready for moving forward and which ones I had to maybe abandon and couldn't go forward with. Next thing I had to do was, because I had myself written a bunch of extensions for the school site. So there was a lot of new coding that I had to do research on, uh, the new coding standards, et cetera. So I needed a lot of time to figure out how I could get my extensions to now plug into uh, the categories component, for example. Because right? in 1.5, I had to write a categories portion of my components, but now I didn't need that. So I had to go through and just rewrite stuff, learn all the new stuff. Next thing we had to do was server requirements changed, right? And all those changed. So I needed to update Apache, PHP, and eventually even MySQL on the server, okay? Little things, but it still took some time, okay? And speaking of time, I had to find the appropriate time to do all this stuff, the, all these upgrades, all the server backups, all this stuff. Because keep in mind, I am managing a website for a college. That can't be offline for very long, if at all, okay? So not only did I have to find a time that was good for me in the marketing department, I had to find time that was good for my colleagues in the IT department because I don't manage the server myself. I have the professionals do it over there. So I had to find time to work with them and find time, uh, whether it was late, late at night or early, early, like Sunday morning when none of the students were going to be accessing our site. And then eventually that turned into, why don't you just wait until the students are on holiday or on vacation? So I had to wait and wait and wait. So you're seeing how the pattern of waiting is turning into this, right? Okay. So we eventually did get to doing our uh, server backups and updating our server and all that stuff. Because um, again, greatness was ahead. We had to push forward with this because finally the big 2.5 release came out. Yeah? Uh, I was excited for that. Uh, it was a joyous time for all, jumping for joy. You guys all recognize these fellows, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, it was a good time for all, everyone, right? Well, maybe not for everyone, because for those of us that were still on 1.5, right, we all knew that we had this big migration looming still, <laughs> coming soon, which of course led to a sense of urgency. We gotta get this done real quick. And then of course, stressful time at work. Mm, headaches, yes, <laughs> migrations. <coughs> okay. So. End of life, April of 2005 for Joomla 1.5, and then even even with the news that the end of life was extended till September-ish of that year, boy, those summer months flew by just like that, real quick. <laughs> I tell you, that was uh, that was a quick summer last year. Yeah. Whew. Okay. So now we definitely need to nail down a plan, right? So we're going back to our drawing board here. Joomla site migration. What are we going to do? mentioned earlier, I had to rewrite all the extensions. Now, 
throughout the whole, uh, we're probably at maybe month 12 here, maybe going on in this plan. So during this time, I've been rewriting all the extensions. I mentioned earlier I can now plug into the categories component. Um, there's all kinds of little things I had to do for the components, the modules, and I even had a few plugins I had to rewrite myself. Um, so that was done. Next part, tweaking the template. Uh, we weren't doing a complete redesign of the site, so thankfully it was just uh, changing a few of the index.php file, uh, updating some of the PHP coding that, uh, like for example, when I was checking to see if the user was on the home page, right? we had to change that stuff around. Uh, and then of course the template details.xml had to update as well, um, doing all that stuff. Next thing I got to do was I got to clean the clutter. I mentioned earlier the third party extensions. Uh, I was actually able to drop probably about six to ten third-party extensions with all the new features that 2.5 offered. Uh, so that was great. Got to just get rid of all that extra junk that I didn't need anymore. Next thing I heard about these tools that were being offered, right? These tools to help us with the migration. So my first thought was something like this. I'm thinking, no, no, not not regular hand tools. We needed more power. Right? So we called these guys. <laughs> you guys all know these guys, yeah? We need more power. So we get some migration tools, right? And J upgrade. J upgrade. How many folks use J upgrade in the room? Short yeah? time. Short, short time. time. Tried. Yeah. Tr tried, yes. Okay. So I chose to use J upgrade because it was the officially endorsed migration tool, right? You guys remember reading those tutorials and even on the on the doc site, it said use J upgrade. So I did. Okay, gave it a try. I just made a backup of my 1.5 site, brought it down locally, installed it, installed JUpgrade, gave it a try, and then we got some errors. Okay. So, some. You just, no, oh, no, it was like this. <laughs> yeah. So, I got some errors, right? But JUpgrade did do some things great for us, but others not so great. Uh, namely, the stuff with K2. So, I had some issues with. Uh, JUpgrade and K2, and I would expect that because JUpgrade is really only promoting the fact that it's going to migrate the core stuff. But you guys remember, uh, JUpgrade did also say, "Oh, now we support K2." So okay, we give that a try. Got some errors, namely category parameters of K2, all gone, all gone. Now, if you guys are familiar with K2, you set up your category, right? Your subcategories. Maybe you inherit some parameters, and there's a lot of parameters in there, right? A lot on that sidebar or wherever it is located in three, right? So all those wiped out for all my 110 categories. Mm, okay. <laughs> Next thing, I noticed that some of the internal linking from K2 item to K2 item was a little screwy. Maybe some of them were broken. Maybe from the category level down to the item, something was going on. So can't blame everything on J upgrade. We're not going to do that. We're going to be nice. Uh, so the next thing in my mind was, let's just go out and find a K2 migration tool and just do uh, J upgrade for all the core stuff, K2 separately. Okay, so was there one for K2? Yeah, yeah. I heard no back there. No, I nothing. Know. Exactly, right? I mean, I, I don't think they're in the room here, but why wasn't there one for K2, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I went out and I looked. There was no migration tool for K2. Now, I would just coming... Maybe it's me from the States, but uh, with a Joomla core replacement extension, such as K2, very big extension, I would kind of assume that maybe there would be some assistance from the developers along the way. But um, alas, I didn't see anything. Thankfully, there was a few uh, community posts on their forum um, or their message boards uh, that did assist a little bit in the way, but still nothing officially from the developers. So again, another stressful time. Uh, now we're pushing into like maybe month 14, 15, I don't know where we are in the timeline here, somewhere. <laughs> so I needed another plan. So we got our first three things done successfully. Uh, migration tools, not so much. We gave it a try. Now we need something different. So I can remember uh, sitting down at lunch one day with some of my IT colleagues. Um, and we, they were talking about projects, and I was talking about some of my projects, uh, and the migration came up. And uh, <laughs> one of my coworkers said to me, you know, Justin, with all these, uh, all these roadblocks you're hitting, all these little hurdles you have to jump through with this migration, why don't you just do a manual rebuild? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> right? <laughs> I told him, don't you dare speak those evil words. <laughs> Anytime I even heard the words manual followed by rebuild, 
I automatically was wondering where my trusty intern was. Unfortunately, that summer, he was out backpacking across Europe with his girlfriend, so he was out of the picture, right? Couldn't help there. So I said to my colleague, all right, fine, I'll, I, just being the one individual person in marketing, will take care of all those items, all those categories, tags, all the menus and modules and all that stuff. And I said, all right, fine, maybe it would literally be worse than finding a needle in a haystack, right? Huge, huge undertaking that could be. And this is only really kind of a, a medium to mid-sized website, right? This isn't a huge, huge site, corporate site, no. Um, so I said there must be a better solution out there. All right, so we're going to go ahead, go back to our drawing board. Manual rebuild's not even a consideration in my mind. No. So <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> Too much going on. Pride thing. Well, and think of uh, when he said that, you know, the first thing that jumped to my mind was the internal linking of page to page yep. uh, via menu items. So if I had to rebuild all my menu items from ground up, that means all those links had to change as well, too. Uh, and yes, the pride thing, of course, yeah. We were gonna get something to work for us here. So the next thing you guys might be wondering is why didn't you just hire a company, all right? So if you guys are unfamiliar with community colleges in the states, they are state and government funded, which means limited funding, okay? Very limited, especially in this economy, limited, okay? Uh, so we did have a marketing budget, but it was used for better things such as promotion of trying to bring students to the college so that we could stay alive as a college, all right? So I really felt that it was my job as the web guy in the marketing department to get this thing done and to think a little differently as to how we can do this. So I came up with this hybrid approach, right? So it's not so much different than what I'm sure all of you guys did. Uh, you know, I've always been a big fan of the word hybrid. Maybe not the vehicles themselves, but the word is always kind of fun to say. So I was like, why don't we just try a hybrid approach? So we're going to do a little bit of automated and a little bit of the manual migration stuff too, okay? So we have our hybrid migration game plan going now. We've got to plan this thing out. So the first thing we're going to do is keep JUpgrade going for the maintaining of the menu items, because right? that did very well for us. That did very good. So we were gonna use JUpgrade for the maintain the menu items. We were gonna also, at the same time, move over the core modules, you know, so that m narrowed down out of that like 100 plus modules I had, we were down to about 40 or 50 that I had to rebuild and all that stuff, so uh, it wasn't too, too terrible. User accounts, we're gonna migrate those over as well. Now on the manual side of the house, right, we're going to do a bunch of fresh database and K2 and Joomla 2.5 installations all on local host. We're not playing with the server yet, just keeping it on local. Then we're going to do some exporting and the importing of the SQL files uh, for the K2 uh, tables. And of course, they're all my custom extensions. Now, my custom extensions went over just fine. No worries there. The K2 side of the house, we actually had to do a little bit of extra work. Uh, we had to add in some new fields for the K2 tables. Uh, namely, something that comes off the top of my head was uh, language got added as a column in the items and categories tables, I believe. Um, not, not a big deal, but we just had to do some comparison uh, and adjust the tables as needed, and then, of course, uh, populate all those new columns with some ones or zeros or whatever we were doing. Okay, so just a little bit of SQL work going on in there. Next thing I had to do was I had to update some author IDs for K2 items and K2 categories, make sure my new author accounts over here on the J25 site match up with all those um, over from coming from the 1.5 site. Then, of course, I had to rebuild my category parameters. Remember, I, I mentioned earlier how I lost them all? Come to find out, uh, earlier versions of K2 stored parameters differently in the database. I see some nodding in the back, yeah. The new way is JSON storage, right? So that's why they got all wiped out because it wasn't flowing over nicely. So I did actually have to go through and rebuild a lot of them. So out of that 100 plus categories I had, thankfully I had used a lot of inheriting of the parameters. So I really only had to probably rebuild around 50 or so. So it wasn't terrible, uh, but still very time consuming for that stuff. All right, next thing we had to do was obviously import the successful J upgrade exports, okay? 
And then, of course, install and rebuild all the third-party extensions. Um, things such as, uh, what, XMAP, uh, maybe Gcalendar, if we have that in there. I'm trying to think of what we have. Uh, but some of those guys that didn't migrate over just had to install, rebuild those. Um, no big deal. We're going to do that. And then, of course, we're going to test and test some more and get all this thing working good. And along the way, we're going to do many, many backups. Right? Akiba became my best friend for the <laughs> longest time. Right? Not that it wasn't already, but it, we really got to know each other pretty good. <laughs> okay. All right. So we have all the elements in place. Ready? All the elements are in place. All the big players around the table. I'm ready to go. My IT staff is ready to go. Right? We found a good time to do this. Right? Because again, I can't do it while the students are in class in session. I have to do it either late at night or when they're on break. Uh, can't do it during a time when we're trying to sell for the next semester. So again, that turned into probably about another month of planning ahead as to when we're actually going to get to do this. But so we finally found our good time, and we went, and went for probably about 10 days, 10, maybe 10 business days. Uh, I was there in the office just plugging away. Um, unfortunately, I can't tell all my other folks in the college to stop sending me work requests. So I have the 1.5 site here still live. The 2.5 site on my local host, requests are coming in to update this guy, so oh, i got to make sure they match up perfectly, right? Uh, and then, of course, when we were finally at a stage when they worked just great, perfect, everything was equal, then we changed the little internal DNS settings on the server, point to the new uh, directory on the server, and we had a good result. Finally, good result. That was easy. Well, not quite. Uh, I, I don't like to think that it was as easy as uh, Staples with the easy button says that it was. Uh, but I do remember pressing that. One of my coworkers had an easy button. I went over there and I hit that pretty hard. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, so when it comes to uh, my overall experience with this migration, I always like to tell people that it was much like a roller coaster ride. Uh, it had its ups, it had its downs, uh, it had its up. Everything from the initial planning phases, the initial testing of 1.6, uh, feeling a little bad about 1.6 maybe a little bit. Um, everything from having to juggle the two websites, make, make sure they're all equal and matching up pretty good. Um, I had a few sleepless nights in between there, I'll say. I was working late at night on a couple of Saturdays uh, while the students were gone. Um, gave up a few weekends and all that stuff, but it was finally done, the result is good. Um, and that's how I like to remember it until one year from now when we go to do this again with 3.5, right? <laughs> so no, one click no. update. One click update? Are you sure? I, I, I will not click on it. I, I'm not actually money on it. Okay, no money. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but so. Um, what I would like to do now is, we were finishing up a little early because we started a little late here, but uh, I'd like to go ahead and open this up to you guys, and I'd like to hear some of your, uh, everyone in the room raised their hand for migration. So I would like to hear if it was easy, hard, uh, what migration tool you used, et cetera. Yes? Okay, uh, 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 I, I used a, a Git upgrade and it did not perform very well. So actually, um, the linking was strong, Just the basic stuff, Luke was, was running right. Okay. And I spent about two days just trying to debug the things which it nearly did. And then uh, I thought, well, maybe there's a better solution. I, I looked around and there were some guys, uh, SP upgrade, mm. and they wanted yeah. to have 20 euros. I was going like, I do <laughs> not really care the fuck if it's uh, working or not. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so smoked out. Just take my yes. 20 euros, if it's <laughs> working, fine, and it worked. Oh. It worked for me, and it just, Good. I said, okay, it's, you're allowed to keep my money, I just thank you. And yeah. That's it. And so that was SP Upgrade. Yeah. Yep. Great, great tool. Great, yeah. great tool. Okay. No, that was not very fancy looking, but does do the job. It's okay. Good. Sure. Yeah. Very good. Yes. One question first, because the, between the moment you have the one point
Steam Valves. Right. Yep. Yeah. Some responsive, maybe? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, did everyone hear the qu Yep. Okay. So, when we, uh, for the longest time, uh, I said we had the 1.5 sites since about 2010 fall. Somewhere in 2011, maybe that summer, uh, we actually built a standalone mobile site. Um, uh, separate, just a single page, long scrolling, couple of sliding panels, etc. Um, and then, of course, we just implemented a little uh, 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 a detection, mobile detection JavaScript on on multiple or our main pages on the website uh, that just said simply, "Hey, we recognize you're on mobile device. Would you like to view our mobile website?" So we actually already had a separate mobile site. Um, and when we're at month maybe 15 or 16 in the migration process, thinking about doing a redesign to make it responsive, we'd be talking, I'd maybe still not even be done, <laughs> right? So we'd be talking maybe 24 or 30 months. <laughs> I, just because we have a lot of content and a lot of the imagery on there, um, a lot of the positioning of elements, modules on the pages. Um, but I'm looking forward to that in 3.5 when we get there, for sure. Yes. Yep. Yes. I hit that <laughs> point. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I hit that point probably around month 15. I was like, I just want this thing done. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, in the back. Yep. No, I. Yeah, I mean, um, for the most part, I was playing around a lot with uh, PHP My Admin and a couple other database uh, uh, applications, um, SQL Pro or whatever it's called. Uh, so I was I, I was fine doing the actual exporting and then importing stuff uh, of tables. That that was fine. It was just all the changes that occurred within the tables, like the the storage of the category parameters. Right. It, yeah. Absolutely. Do you have one in mind as to what they were called? Yeah, I do, but since I forgot what they called. Okay. Yes, I'm back. Yep. I'm sorry, what's that? Oh. Uh, no, uh, multi language was not something that we were considering for our site, no. <laughs> yeah. Um. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I, I was engaged in a project for, um, um, uh, it was an, an NGO, a similar kind of size website, and it was almost completely uh, multilingual. Okay. And we, 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 it already was multilingual in 1.5. Oh, good. Uh, so we, we um, had the friend of Deep Fish <laughs> to take care of it. Right. So Okay. And they were, well, they needed to get used to the new 
one interface anyway. So we said, <laughs> why don't we do all the, we skip all the preparations and um, all the cleaning up of the gutter and the getting used to the new interface. We do it while we repair and restore the whole website. So huh? the new chain so it can migrate and jump over so that it's not right. more or less overloaded. Yep. And yeah, we only had 500 manual items to do in two languages, which was great fun. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We got that right from the start, but that was not much of a problem. And most of the calls came from Santos, hey, this has all the menu applications were wrong, or, or right. really the big part of the website didn't function anymore, but it was relatively <laughs> easy to, to, to actually fix it by hand. So what? Really? We did. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Now, was that, did you guys go to 2.5 or 3? We went to 2.5. Okay. Okay. Uh, yep. 3 was not as much a to the first. Okay, gotcha. Yes. I have a nice other political story. Uh, I have a project and the client has a good idea that I must have him one site for the French and one site for the English and one site for the Portuguese with a different URL. So the question was, he wants to have a new site and he wants, of course, to be aware of what article in it is on the other language to switch, not to the home page, but the other site, yeah. which was the case then. But <laughs> the article. Yeah. The whole thing is, how do you match? in one language and a different from article to word translated so if you look at records you never ended up with the same set set of records and that's you know in a sense cheating so what you find is this because well manually you can you could not match it you could match it to a certain point and then it goes wrong so it's okay let's have google translate in between between the titles mm -hmm. if you have first go into google translate and at least some keywords match then you can use that to on the database level match those applications trying to reintegrate them back together. And okay. doing right. that, finally we ended up with having like only 10 to 15 percent of manual, which is the highest level of search, and manual yep. matching of the database. So it was, okay. a, it was a hell of a job. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the back there? My, my experience was with pages. I never I was Okay. We were lucky enough because we had informatics people, genetics people who are, their area of expertise is mapping. In Joomla or Pintu, their area is, is really mapping databases. Okay. My bigger concern here, and, and I think it was tackled with the internal, with languages, yep. is the redirect. Oh, when I, I yeah. think that's the curse of us Joomla developers. We persevere in the pain. <laughs> so, however, like if you migrate from one point, Journals link to us, you know, scientific journals would link to us, and if, if we change our URL, yeah. we get a phone call in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. and that's, that's where the biggest key for us, even in our XML export, the redirects don't connect. It, it, it's a database. It doesn't right. export the URL. <coughs> right. So it's, it's manual. Someone goes through a redirect 404 and, and we... And create so through... No, 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 they use a big site map. Uh, all the crawl, all the links, mm -hmm. and uh, then I uh, um, say, okay, monitor all the four fours, and then I do the redirect uh, yeah. manually back. secure enough, you're most probably faster than the client finds them. I, I think that's the strength for us Joomla guys, is that we see a really good tool in Pintu. When it came out, I thought it was 
God sent. I mean, we learned that being at me, we probably have like higher education class. Mm -hmm. For us, that was priceless. Right. But then we realized, you know, 1.6, 1.7. What the crap is going to do with K2? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> our God sent actually turned out to be a nightmare. Yes. <laughs> so let me ask you. So when you made the decision to drop K2, did you have extra fields oh, using? We're, we're going to another place. We moved to Zoom. Because we didn't want to. We, I'm, I'm a loyalist. I came from Mambo. I've seen how horrible Mambo was to what Junior is now. Yeah. I'm not going to go to Baltimore. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I spent so much time. <laughs> Very late in the migration process, right? When 2.5 came out, we, or 1.6, we all realized we got our subcategories finally, right? Uh, and now in what 2.5 or sorry, 3.2 or 3.1, we have the tagging. Yeah. Um, and if you really don't care about like com built-in comments, maybe now you, the only thing that's holding me back from uh, pushing away from K2 is the extra fields. So if anyone in this room can write a plugin or something to help me move or take some extra fields for some of my content items on a per category basis. Let's talk after this, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, it can be, but I, I don't know. <laughs> and is there documentation for it so that... <laughs> yes. can, yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, no Excellent. But you should always should, right? We'll always make a better. Never do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Do you have a question or anything? From two five forward, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I yeah. 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 I just went to, to one seven. Yeah, I'm like yeah. one point five to seven just because I felt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I didn't. I used one point six locally only, mm. not, not not live production at all. Any other questions? Yes. In the back. 
closer observer of the ratio. And we use only the short range projection. So 1.6, 1.7, and this is quite unclear what the change is. So that's the next. Yeah. Uh, which gets always better when it's too short. So, so there's 2.5 to use a step yeah. range. And we will do the same thing now with this. We first will use the 2.1 and 2.0, and I don't know all the stuff. To get used to it, and we use the small size. So we know they are very easy. But for the real stuff, we really want to have 2.5. And that's the main thing for us. That's what we sure. From, at least from our experience. I don't have like the diverse clientele that you guys have. But we would have, like for example, we have a small project in Africa. What we will do is you guys get your 3.0. You map it up. It's a small site. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, that's the sure. only way. Because we'll never move our main site into you know, the latest, greatest. Just because that thing will always It's called random menu. Random menu. <laughs> 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 it's a Java 2.5 There's no single object thing where everyone lives in. You, you have a rendition from a menu, which is what's happening to you, yeah. and you have a rendition when you click from a category blob or a section blob thing. 
that's yeah. unique to Joomla. That's yeah. always been the case. Yeah. That's why you make like hidden menus in Joomla yeah. that make sure that they redirect from that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They've never fixed that from an, from, from way way yeah. back. Settings so yeah. this pay, pay, yeah. pay, 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 uh, yeah. page file and yeah. so on, I it and uh, overwrote them all yeah. with, with the same. Yeah. And I think then it did not occur anymore, but I'm not sure about it. So I, I, I do, I'm not sure if I mix up things in my memory or not. I'll tell you the, I'll tell you the, the, the solution in the Joomla instruction. It says you have to do a, a update query and set the menu row for all menu items. Stored to there, there's a, a longer string in in the database column okay. params right. and what I actually did is uh, 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 I put uh, uh, I took to one uh, yeah. new all the parameters uh, there which I said okay for for 95 percent of all the menu items seems to be okay I just took that yeah and just overwrote all oh, okay. and um, then on the front page I said, okay, this okay. page is final, and that, that was it. I have a um, question about that thing. Yeah. But the BIOS can you wait for the whole alias, because it has the same alias in different menus. Ah, the same. When you have the export, uh, exported and imported yeah. the same thing. wasn't the menu item. Yeah. So I have to to uh, get rid of all the alias yeah. and then import it again. And then yeah. I can see it. Oh, but you can, have, you can have the same aliases as long as they're not in the same root level of the menu. Yeah, but it creates a problem. No, that's, okay. that's a problem. Also, if yeah. you got it into trash. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, well, thank you, everybody. Thank That's you. Good. Yeah,